I just got up and I usually head out to milk about 6 in the morning during the winter and I got my milking tow here I'm going to put all the stuff in there that I need to milk lilac. I have paper towels, tea dip, and then I'm going to put in some wet and dry washcloths. I put them in this little container to keep them clean while I carry them out to the barn. And then, too, I use warm water because I would rather use warm than cold. I think lilac appreciates that too. So I just put them in this little container. I get lilac in just so it kind of stays out of the way and no one messes with it. Another morning ritual letting Nag him out of the barn. Come on. Good boy. Here's the cat. Say hi. My name's Mutton. I'm very handsome. So I got her brush and I'll go out and brush her now. Oh, la, la, la. Come here. Good morning, Lilac. I brush her because she, especially right now with the hay feeder, she has a lot of stuff on her that could potentially fall off into the milk bucket while I'm milking her. And then I also comb around her udder and the underside of her belly so that stuff wouldn't fall off either. So I feed her um, one to one and a half scoops of chicken feed a day. I just do this because she's a dairy cow. Most of her food comes from forage, but I found that she needs a little extra energy because of the extra milk output. Take it and unroll it, and I'm gonna wipe off my next teeth. Next, I take a dry cloth and I rub it on the bag of her udder. So not the teats and get some of the loose debris off and get it ready to milk. Also, it helps her let her milk down doing that. This is the teat dip. Wiping off the teat dip. Get my hands clean. I want everything um, clean as possible. If I have sink up here, I wash my hands in the sink. And so that way you get less bacteria in the milk and the milk lasts longer and has a better balance. So I'm stripping out a couple of strips from each teat because to get clean milk into the teat to start milking. And there's no clumps or anything in there so she's good she does not have a mastitis infection then i put the milk over here and there's the milk for the cat her milk's letting down and is running out
there's the milk. So that's a four gallon pail, so that'll be a gallon or a little under. There's not much milk right now because she's in the process of being dried off, which means stopped milking. She's been milking for about 16 months, I think. I got her in December of last year, so that was 13 months ago, and she had been milking since September. Um, she should have been bred about the time I got her, but she hadn't been bred. With the adjustment, she, was, she wasn't ready to be bred, and so this summer she was, and so she will calve in a time around April 1st, so you start milking two months ahead of time to just give them a break before their calf comes again. And so they can use all the energy that they have for making their baby. Okay. will go out and eat hay and lay around for the rest of the day. So now I'm getting water to rinse off the milking stanchion out there. We only have cold water out in the barn. It's not hot, that's why I have to, that's why there's no sink to wash my hands in. cleaned up the milking stanchion and then we're headed up to the house now to put the milk in jars. The beauty of wearing Carhartt bibs is you get to wear your pajamas. And nobody knows. Magnum snuck in. So I bring the milk up to the house basement. Having a milk room in the barn would be ideal. So we don't have hot water up there and I don't process that much milk. So it's not a big deal to carry it up here. So after washing your hands, first order of business is to get the milk in to the jar so I can get it cooling. So I got a filter and then I grab this filter right here and I put it on top and then I press it in to the groove for it and then you're ready to strain your milk. So I like to put my milk in these half gallon mason jars. They work really great. They're big enough that you can clean inside of them. And they're wide mouth, so they're big enough that you can clean inside of them. And they're a really great size for handling and using and storing. So there's today's milking. That's not very much, but this spring she'll probably be having, when she calves, she will be having about three and a half gallons or so, I'm hoping. I milk once a day, and in the spring when she calves, I'll milk twice a day for a little bit, and then I'll work it down probably within a month to once a day. So now I'll put the date on them and put them in the freezer to cool. So this is some milk that's going out. One of the last jars ought to go out before she dries off. And so it has the, what it is on it and I put the date. 
So I put it in the freezer for an hour and a half to get it cooled off. There's some extra frozen milk that'll get us through while she's dry. Then you set your timer for an hour and a half. And there you go. Now it's time to wash everything up, my least favorite part. So I'm rinsing the stuff that has milk on it off. I use warm water because you don't want to use hot water that makes the milk adhere to it. So you rinse it with warm and then you wash it with hot. It's washing time. So the most important thing about milking is just keeping everything clean, so I do my best to do that. So now I'm washing up my teeth dip cup and my milking tote thing. I only do that maybe once a month, but today happened to be the day whenever my teeth dip runs out, that's when it's time to clean it. So the last video, I got a lot of questions about pasteurizing the milk. I have done research on that and I've concluded that I do not want to pasteurize the milk. From what I found is raw milk is perfectly safe if it is kept clean. That is the clause. A lot of farmers and stories that you hear the milk is not kept clean. And so that is what I strive for and I have had absolutely no problems with my milk being raw. If you have any questions on it, I would encourage you to do your own research and draw your own conclusions about um, the safety of it and which milk is better for you to drink. So thank you for watching this video and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or anything else to say. So thank you for watching.